Hello, welcome back for another mod spotlight video on Ark Survival Ascended. Today we are going to be checking out the brand new premium mod map, Alphemia. This map will set you back 10 US dollars, which is quite a hefty price. It can be played cross-platform, but it is stated in the map description that it is around 90% complete, so I am expecting great things. In this video, I'll be showcasing everything new in the premium version, so the new biomes, creatures, map features, and all the good stuff in detail, to see if the map is really worth the $10 price tag. So without further ado, Dude, let's get straight into it. Firstly, let's talk about the map as a whole in case you are new to the map and wanted to even try out the free version, which I must say is still pretty awesome when compared to the premium version. The creator has made this map as unique as possible with many mysteries to unfold, revolving around the past civilization that once inhabited this world. It is seen as a magical paradise with a variety of different biomes to explore, resembling biomes from other maps but having its own character. It also features a wide variety of creatures that have made their home on Alphemia, coming from all climates including Scorpion, Scorched Earth DLC creatures, a few aberration creatures and variants, and the map exclusive magic creatures which look amazing. Expect to find the magic Gigantoraptor, Phylocolio, and the super rare magic unicorn. Moving on to what is new with the premium version. Let's kick this off with the new biomes and map changes. I've been thoroughly exploring the map for the past three days straight, and I have discovered a lot of new features and points of interest that are different from the free version. I have to say that the map really is a beauty, and if you do love fantasy maps, then this could be a great one to try, whether it be the free or premium version. The snow biome was one of the pre-existing biomes that I did notice some big differences within, and if you know me, you know I love a good snow biome. It is my favorite of all. The free version was kind of plain Jane, but you can see there's a lot more colour and more verticality in the premium version. Some new landscape features that would definitely make for some cool base locations if you are a fan of the snow biome. But once again I do find myself criticising this with snow biomes on almost every mod map. It's 23 degrees man. When I see this harsh yet beautiful landscape it makes me think of freezing cold and brutal survival. I want to be hugging my campfires here not sunbathing. Moving to the northeast part of the map we have this new picturesque looking biome which is definitely a massive improvement as there was basically nothing in this area in the free version. Looks like a lovely place to build I must say. Travelling down to the southeast corner of the map we have this mysterious looking biome distinguished by a giant megalodon hanging from a chain into the water. I mean I guess the map creator wasn't lying when they said they had made the map as unique as possible. This area offers more awesome potential base locations and exploration value. Most notably if you dive into the water with the giant megalodon you will find a mother load of black pearls. The lake which is very shallow can even house two so spawns. No idea how they got here but hey I'm not complaining. At the bed of this lake you will also find these glowing purple rocks which can be harvested for black pearls. There are a lot of new resource nodes included in the premium version which we will showcase in just a little bit. In the west the Wyvern Trench has had a large extension which is a big upgrade as it was completely empty in the free version. I did read up on their discord that the nests and fertilized eggs were also a new addition. I have never properly played the free version so if that is the case then this will be very welcoming for the Wyvern lovers out there. The pre-existent trench has also received some TLC and a small rework. It was actually very hidden in the free version, covered in too many trees. And in the premium version, it's more open and detailed, which definitely looks better in my opinion. There has been a lot of cave changes to the map. Most have been reworked with the addition of a brand new parkour cave, which I am a massive fan of. It's definitely given me Ragnarok puzzle cave vibes, filled with a bunch of tasty loot crates to be had, where you'll be torn with the decision of putting your life on the line, potentially risking a cheeky bath in the lava for more loot, or grabbing the artifact and dipping out. I know what path I'm going to choose. On the subject of loot, there has been a lot more loot crates and cave loot added to the premium version. There is a cave in the centre of the map which I am dubbing the Tech Cave. As it bears similarities to it, you will find the most dangerous of predators in this cave, including the mighty Giga. So you will most likely have to be well prepared for this adventure. These predators are guarding a plethora of high quality loot. I believe I saw 5 or more red loot crates inside. And also a mini boss terminal which we'll get onto in a bit. Another example of good loot is this small hidden cave located in the north. Nothing even spawns in this cave from what I've seen. Boom! Easiest two red loot crates you'll ever grab in the game. Moving on to the unique resource nodes that have been added to the premium version. I am addicted to farming resources in this game, so seeing new resource nodes like this on a map is a big win for me. So let's go through them real quick. These red rocks scattered throughout the map, which can be harvested for electronics. Purple crystals located in the northeast corner of the map. These can be harvested for element shard. White crystals located on the snow islands in the northern to northwest corner of the map. These can be harvested for organic poly. Weird colorful looking rocks located in the redwoods, strangely harvested for raw meat. So I guess that's that could save you a meat run or two. 
Creature statues found in the center of the map in the swamp-like area. These can be harvested for spoiled meat. Black crystals located in the redwoods near the honey cave can be harvested for a resource called meal. It looks like honey, but I'm honestly unsure of what it's used for or whether it's a substitute to honey or not. And the purple glowing black pearl rocks we've already spoke about. These can also be found in the ocean. A variety of new metal ingot nose distinguished by their color. I'm not even sure how many different types there are or what they are used for other than the requirement for summoning bosses. These are the resource nodes I have discovered so far, but there may be more that I've missed. Speaking of bosses, this map adds six brand new and challenging mini bosses. These can all be summoned from separate terminals scattered around the map. These areas have all massively changed. I actually quite liked these castles that were in the free version, replacing it with a giant arena for each mini boss, which I will take over the castle any day, especially if you're going to war with a mini boss. All arenas look different and it's evident of the amount of work that has been put into them. With each arena, you will find a boss terminal in the center. This of course is where you will summon the bosses onto the map, with each boss requiring completely different tributes, artifacts, resources or items to summon. The map adds a lot of progression value with these mini bosses, as you still have the option of fighting the three main bosses, the Broodmother, Megapithecus and the Dragon from Obelisk Terminals. So let's take a quick look at the bosses in the flesh. We have the Acid Inflicting Ceratosaurus boss, the Uncontrollable Spino, the Queen Rhinia Nafa, the Gorilla, which both appear to have some textural issues. These are definitely not the same textures I saw in the photos on the Discord channel, so they probably still need a bit of work. The Magma X, and finally the Mini Karka boss, which was totally invisible for me. This was after spawning it in, and even summoning it from the terminal, which is a bit of an issue, so I wouldn't recommend fighting the Karka boss right now. It does look pretty beast from what I saw in the photos, so I was pretty sad when I didn't get to see it in the flesh. All have a large health pool and have potential to deal massive damage, so you will definitely need an army or the right strategy to take them down. I ran the Ceratosaurus boss as a test and it completely wiped out my fairy army in a matter of seconds, dealing over 6,000 damage a hit in some instances, which is crazy. Not to mention I have 120 armor saddles on all of them. I would hate to know what it deals to primitive saddles. Also, I'd like to point out that even though it wiped out my entire army, no problem at all, it could not handle me in the flesh and wasn't even able to hit me at all. So hopefully the map developers are aware of these problems, as if I had enough ammo, I could have probably just killed it while standing in front of it. So yeah, assuming it could hit me, I definitely failed miserably. But it would be rude not to kill it with the admin gun to see what rewards we receive. Oh, look at all that element. You will be rewarded well for killing these mini bosses. All the map changes are great, but it's now time to get into the nitpicking. And it does pain for me to say it, the amount of bugs and glitches in this map is almost uncountable. There are many lighting issues, for example you can see here, if I look to the left the textures look normal, which is how they should look, but when I look to the right the textures will instantly turn and bright. More lighting issues include constant flickering in certain areas of the map. You can see in this area, which is the direct center of the map, we have a bunch of random block shadows dancing around in the lake. And while we're here in this location, I'll showcase the most common bug, which is teleporting. There are so many areas on this map where you'll just be flying around, minding your own business, then poof! teleported to somewhere else on the map. No idea where you're at. It's almost like you woke up from a hangover. In this instance, I was in the lake underneath the giant pink tree. And as you can see, I'm now inside the pink tree, which is basically at the sky barrier. So it's almost teleported me to another planet. The developers have addressed this area in their discord, stating that they are working on a rework for this section of the map. But there are many areas around the entirety of the map where this teleport issue will occur. Another example is inside many caves, where you will be randomly teleported outside and above the cave side. Somewhere. Another weird issue I have discovered is the landscape completely vanishing. For example, I look to the left here, looking good, but you look to the right, boom, everything vanishes into thin air. I also do believe the creature spawns need some work, as there's even no creatures in some areas, or there is drastic overspawning in other areas. Like this area, for example, I've never seen anything like it. Literally hundreds of creatures stuck inside each other having a right party. Just being involved in this party actually killed my frames to a halt and crashed my nitrata so server. Couldn't even rejoin for another 20 minutes. This area is the swamp biome, so I highly recommend avoiding this area, unless for some reason your game isn't over spawning these types of creatures. I've stuck coordinates down just in case. I'd like to point out I'm not hating. I honestly want to see this map succeed, because I do really like the map, and I do hope the developers are aware of all these issues, and if they aren't, hopefully they will watch this video. With all that being said, is it worth the $10 price tag? Well, I'm going to be completely honest, I love this map, all the new features, resource nodes, biomes, and 
and especially the mini bosses. These are all outstanding features and I've always been a big fan of progression in Ark. It's the main reason why the island map was always so appealing to me. Sadly the caves are a little too easy in my opinion so I'd like to see more challenging caves but the massive issue is all the bugs and glitches included. I would expect not to see any of these bugs if I'm paying $10 for a map and I do hate to say it but it does feel poorly optimized. It does hit the frames pretty hard when compared to other mod maps and I also tend to crash way more on this map than any other map and I wholeheartedly believe that the issues will be fixed in the very near future and we will see the map completed in all its glory. I'm personally more than happy to contribute $10 if it helps the map get the bug fixes it needs but for the average player I do recommend waiting to buy it. I really do think this map has a lot of potential it just needs a little bit of TLC in terms of bug fixes and glitches and maybe for other map creators potentially watching this take note of those mini bosses because I love them. If this map does interest you then I highly recommend joining their discord channel to keep up to date with all the updates. Link will be in the description of the video and in the pinned comment which I will also update with new map changes after the release of this video. As I am making this video the updates are already coming in so that's great to see and it is stated that the middle of the map will be receiving a complete remodel which will happen in the next few days so I'm really looking forward to that and fingers crossed it will fix all the issues in the area. And that is going to be the end of the video I hope you all enjoyed it and if it was helpful in any way don't forget to like comment share and subscribe for more art content and maybe even help me reach my goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I really appreciate all the support. Aberration is just around the corner so I'll be doing my best to pump out a load of video guides for that and I'm still slowly working on my 100 day videos. Hope you all have a great week and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.